this is Larissa. Welcome. If you're joining the replay, welcome. I'm just going to check to make sure that over on Facebook that it's showing up properly and that I can see comments and everything. Check it out here. Um, while, while it's waiting to load, I am so pleased you're here. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for spending some time. We're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is travel, exploring the world, following your wanderlust. And today we're going to talk about three simple ways to manifest more travel in your life. And um, yeah, it's, it's, so three simple ways to talk about travel and get more in your life. If you're not traveling already, I am hoping that you'll, by the end of this, you'll be wanting to travel more. If you are traveling already, I intend by the end of this that you'll want to travel deeper. So hold on, let me, let me look at my, um, oh, Amy might be here. Hi, Amy. Um, so the, we're going to look at what you focus on expands from law of attraction, visioning techniques. So we're going to start by looking at or remembering some travels to start bringing that travel bliss, the happiness we've had in travel back. We're going to look at planning and anticipation of future travel. And then we're going to look at getting beyond just visioning, making some of our planning and anticipation experiential in our everyday life. So welcome everyone. If you don't know me, my name is Larissa. I believe incredibly in the powerful transformative nature of travel and want to encourage everyone to get out, explore the world, follow their wanderlust, and get to know other cultures, get to know other uh, ways of living and enjoy enjoy life enjoy freedom enjoy getting out from behind four walls getting out behind from the cubicle at work so let's get started with some some fun things first of all why I mean I, I know that I believe in travel but if you've been wanting to travel but haven't like why travel why why go out and explore the world so there was some recent studies that showed that travel is happiness that people had they incorporated they had more happiness in their life based on taking vacations traveling but what they were surprised at is that as well as the actual travel which make seems to make intuitive sense the anticipation of travel augmented the happiness factor as well. So you might say if you're not traveling and not thinking about it, you're doing your own, yourself a disservice by not traveling. You're not allowing as much happiness in your life if you're not incorporating travel into your lifestyle. So the first thing, we're gonna just focus on some travel. So if you've done some traveling, I'd love to know. Um, where did you have the most unique travel experience? And unique can be anything. Uh, it could be from riding a yak, you know, in some place that you weren't expecting. It could be trying a new food. It could be any place. Um, I mean, I've had such incredible adventures around the world in different places. So um, for me, I feel like it's hard to pick one, but riding a camel for sure was quite unique and spending the night out in the desert was quite unique. And so another question would be, um, what's a most unusual food you've ever eaten on a trip? And so while you're thinking about that, um, tell you a little bit more about myself. I was born at the World's Fair and if that isn't an indication of how the world and getting to know the world would be part of my life, don't I just don't think there's a bigger kind of symbolic piece of life or 
event in the life, then I've lived abroad, I've worked abroad, I've traveled a lot of places, I also work with people coming to the United States, so I see what they see. So yeah, so I've been asking, what what is one of your most interesting foods you've ever eaten on a trip? So one point when I lived in, um, where is that living? In Philippines, they have something called balut, which you can look it up on the internet. I don't, it's half, it's a partially developed egg, chicken, so they eat it scrambled, they eat it boiled, you know, like a hard boiled egg, and interestingly enough, some parts taste more chicken and some parts taste more egg. It wasn't bad. Um, so then I, back to travel, you know, makes us happy. There's no right or wrong way to travel. Anything that you do when you travel will bring about this happiness uh, quotient or levels. So, for example, you could go all out, stay at, you know, five-star hotels, eat at Michelin-starred restaurants. You could check off all the top ten things to do in a city, go to the museums, the parks, different experiences. Or you could go more low-budget, stay in a youth hostel. You could uh, hang out in a cafe in Paris all day long. All of this is good for upping your happiness quotient. There's no right or wrong way to experience travel. You can go locally, you could go just a weekend trip, you could uh, go off to another country for a couple of months. It's all, it's all good. So now we're going to go to the second step. We're going to look at the planning and anticipation. So you might have um, some plans already. I'd love to know Please comment below what might be on your bucket list of places to travel to or experiences. Maybe you have something kind of already planned out there later this year or next year. I'd love to know where your destination is that you're thinking of. Maybe you're thinking of going to some place in Europe, uh, maybe some tropical island, maybe something very exotic. Maybe something low budget, maybe you want to go to Africa, uh, Mexico. Love to know where you're thinking of traveling to. I have a lot of travel within the United States planned. I've been gone, personally, I've been gone out of the country a lot, so to be in the country, to see family, is uh, the travel I have going on in different states. Florida, New York, and maybe Savannah, Georgia, we'll see. So based on those bucket list items, if maybe you have them on the calendar, great, because maybe you know you have certain vacation plans or you're coordinating it with other people, so perfect. I'll additionally like to ask you if you don't have it, if you do believe and you love doing travel or vision boards, if you don't have your travels on your vision boards, I would recommend just adding something like here's a here's a board behind me. You can add a little thing depending on where your destination might be. You could add something if it's beach related or maybe you're, you want to be a digital nomad and work there. So maybe you have money coming in while, or maybe you're going to be a guest speaker at a place and you're going to take advantage of being in a location to have some fantastic travel arranged. Um, what else uh, on the vision board? What else have, oh, I've, I couldn't find, I have another one I couldn't find I wanted to show you. Put an airplane on there or a mode of transportation or put the actual country or a map of the city, some other ideas you can put on a travel vision board to start getting your unconscious mind and the universe working on your behalf. Um, and let's, uh, let's see, oh, so the next thing I wanted to talk about, the third thing, is we want to take this idea of planning and anticipation and move it more experientially. So for example, when you think of this dream destination that you want to go to, if you could think of a song that relates to that, what would that be? It could be a song, if it's in another country, maybe they have a 
a particular type of music there or a style of singing maybe it would be a song like that like if you're going to Cuba maybe like some salsa if you're going to Morocco it might be some oud music or some Af drumming in Africa or other other countries or maybe it's just a song that uh, ev evokes for you sort of a travel bliss and it could be you know a song in English if that's your your native language so I'd love to know in the comments below what would be a song and you might have to you know if you don't know you might have to research it and see and then the, the another example I'll give you is um, with jewelry so on your past travels you might have bought yourself a piece of jewelry from a street vendor a local artisan or at a gallery you you stumbled upon and now when you have it at home or if you wear it it brings back all those memories of that trip of the experience of interacting buying it maybe you bartered for it and we want to sort of flip that on its head and take a piece of jewelry that's going to project in the future we're going to sort of look at creating memories towards the future so it can be, I have a couple of pieces here, it could be a variety of things. It could be um, sort of a technique. So I'm going to hold up a few things here. We have a necklace here. This could be someplace in Africa. Maybe that you want to go to Sub-Saharan Africa. This could be something that, um, you know, oh, you know, I want to go there. It could be material. So like this happens to be from Bermuda. This, you know, it's got this beautiful um, knacker or mother of pearl shell that's on a shell. I don't know if you, it's not exactly a chain, but it's sort of woven, twisted, and it's all shell. So this could be something if you're thinking of going to a beach place or a resort, um, Caribbean, tropical, something like that could be good. Maybe you want to go on a wellness, a wellness vacation with a lot of yoga. You could have a charm added to something. And all of this is to the, about the music and uh, one more thing here. So here's, here's a turtle shell. It's not real, it's made from porcelain. But a turtle shell is highly symbolic in many, many countries. In Greece, it was, the first coin had a tortoise shell on it. It's used in a lot of stories of creation. China uses uh, tortoise and in Tahiti. And then these green sea urchin spines, they're from a, sp a specific group of islands in Tahiti. So you can incorporate local materials on jewelry. And it's all about bringing sort of a vision board, kind of that type of idea, making it three dimensional for yourself so you're living it. And I'm hoping that some of these things have given you some ideas to feel inspired to travel again. I'd love to know what, what has been keeping you from traveling. If you have some travel goals, travel plans, maybe, um, maybe you had travel plans, but you took a new job and life just got in the way. Maybe you feel stretched financially. Maybe, um, maybe you got kids love to hear in the comments below what you feel is you know kind of keeping you maybe you just kind of stop forgetting about it for a while so I'm hoping by talking through some of these examples and these questions you're feeling inspired yeah I do you know remembering your desire to travel again and with your permission I'd love to share with you uh, something that I've been offering to amplify your visioning of travel, to amplify your wanderlust, to get you thinking even more about it, to get the universe on your side, helping you manifest more travel in your life. So type a one below if you, if I have your permission to share. And what I've been offering, if you like the creative idea of vision board, what I've been offering a couple times a year is a travel visioning session and we work on a travel vision board we then take that off the board and make it very experiential we talk through with the meditation uh, we do 
all the senses we incorporate in some way. And this works really well even if you're just thinking of traveling, even if you're thinking that you'll be traveling solo so you're not sure who you might be traveling with, or if you're planning a 50 year anniversary because you never took the honeymoon that you thought you would. It works if you're feeling a little financially stretched because we're not going to focus so much on how any of this is going to happen. We're going to just focus on really that visioning and the travel bliss and that anticipation factor that I talked about earlier. And I would be ridiculously thrilled for all of you to join me. And I'd like you to go to my website, type it in the comments below, larissaraleigh.com. I'll spell it for you. L-A-R-I-S-S-A Raleigh, R-O-L-L-E-Y.com. If you go to my website, join my email list to be among the first, you'll be the first people to be notified when I run this travel visioning workshop again. And like I said, I would be so thrilled to have you join me. And if you're watching the replay, thank you so much. Thank you for joining the live stream, those of you that are here. And any comments, I'll come back. Any questions, I'll come back and answer them. Just a reminder, if you are traveling already, I want you to travel more. And if you're not traveling, I want you to start traveling um, more, travel deeper. Thanks for joining me. Bye.